Hello and welcome to the Comic Sleep Podcast, the official podcast of ComicSleep.com. My name is Joseph. Thank you for joining us for episode six. On this episode, we are talking about the 2015 Gimlet Media Podcast Mystery Show, hosted and created by Starly Kine. This was a six episode, one season podcast um, created by Gimlet Media that uh, I listened to back in 2015 as it was coming out and it's always stuck with me as something you know unique or just different from from what you get from from a lot of this type of podcast we're going to talk about the you know the dna or the inspiration um of this podcast a little bit in our conversation uh and so we're going to try to get at right i listened to this as it was coming out i shared it with angela and we both have memories of it right it was both it was memorable for both of us and we're going to try to get at why why it has stuck with us um for the last five years and then yeah try to you know contextualize it in where podcasts are right now in in 2015 because the you know kind of sounds weird to say but podcasts are sit in a different place as far as people's awareness of them and sort of what we know they can be um you know, now compared to, to 2015. Um, but and, and it, we're also going to try to get at why why we enjoy Mr. Show. I think we're going to struggle to get there. I think we'll, we'll get there at the end, um, you know, kind of specifically nailed on our enjoyment of it or, or what it is that is so enjoyable about it. But it, um, but yeah, I, on the whole, you're going to hopefully hear us be, be very excited about it. On this episode, we talked specifically about episodes two, three, and five, but we also discussed all six of them more uh more broadly again that's mystery show podcast you can find it uh on gimmick media's website or on spotify or anywhere you get your podcasts um thank you for joining us for this episode uh we're going to be right back with our conversation about mystery show all right so we're uh we're going to talk about mystery show today which is a 2015 podcast and um we're going to have Angel's, Angel's going to read the Wikipedia uh, entry in, in a second. And, and we've realized that with this is like, we've been doing this for like every episode. And it's like, it's like the same thing as if people start a, uh, you know, how when people start a, um, a paper, like according to Webster's Dictionary. <laughs> so I think we, we've been like going to Wikipedia. So I think we'll call this like according to Wikipedia. <laughs> um so I, I know we won't always do it but whenever we whenever we start something whenever we start an episode with wikipedia we'll you know we'll according to wikipedia but um <laughs> i also think i think it's interesting a little bit just how like right how does someone on the internet or how does like a group of people on on the internet summarize this thing um it can often be a good like launching point but um yeah so angela what is according to wikipedia what did what do they say about uh, the the mystery show podcast according to wikipedia mystery show is a gimlet media podcast hosted by starly kine that ran for one season in 2015 in each episode kine solves a minor mystery which cannot be solved with search engines alone it was declared the best podcast of 2015 by itunes um okay i would argue that one of them if not two of them definitely could be solved by search engines alone. <laughs> um, the, the, there's an episode where she finds a belt buckle with people's names on them. And I think like, maybe not just like search engines, but someone who's like pretty crafty with the internet, as far as like looking up like, old addresses and telephone numbers could have maybe hunted those people down without going in person mm-hmm. <laughs> um and then the the lunchbox episode did you listen to all of them or did you just listen to the three that we talked about i listened to two three and five because you told me to and yeah. then i remember i think it was back in 2015 we listened to the welcome back cotter lunchbox when we were oh, driving okay. from san francisco to portland Okay. I do remember that one. Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> so she's like, there's, um, and this is diving in deep very quickly, but there's a picture painted on a lunchbox 
and the picture doesn't appear to ref- like it sort of seems to be the artist's own interpretation of the Welcome Back Cotter show, a show I've never seen. I don't know anything about it. I know John Travolta's in it, but she her thing was like, well, where does this, where did the artist get the inspiration for this specific like uh, sight gag that's on the lunchbox? And it turns out it was from, um, it turns out it was from a book about like how to be a modern cowboy. So like, <laughs> maybe could have been solved with the internet but that you know not that that's not to say like anything that, that, that i'm not trying to like disparage the podcast because I, I do really like it um what did you think i don't because i i have like a lot of thoughts but just what what did you think so so we probably listened to it if that road trip was 26 we probably listened to it like soon after it came out that probably happened that was in yeah. 2015 or 2016, so it's still like kind of new. I know I was really big into it then. What What did you think of it then? When I like had you listen to it, and then how did that? How did you like interpret it now, or what did you think about it now? Um, back then, I didn't ever listen to podcasts, so I didn't really understand what a podcast was. And then I remember you had put this one on. You had put like 99 percent invisible or something. You had, like, the Radio diary, So you've had, like, a bunch of podcasts on during the entire drive. But I yeah. I specifically remember this one for some reason, just because it seems so much like a story and, like, easier to digest. Um, I don't really remember being particularly interested in the story. Yeah, fair. But I remember being able to, like, follow what was going on. Um, but then, like, listening to all of them now, just because, like, I have, like, started listening to podcasts, like, different types of podcasts... Um, it was definitely, like, more engaging for me, but it sort of reminded me, this, like, format of, like, her just, like, solving mysteries reminded me of that Reply All podcast I was talking to you about okay. with the song, yeah. where it's just, like, someone is going to really extreme lengths to find information that isn't exactly, like... <laughs> important like no yeah one, no, like <laughs> not necessary not essential to know yeah. yeah it's like some of them it's like nice that the closure happened but other ones I, it's I guess like I why does say, this matter yeah, <laughs> or like I, yeah yeah um i think the belt buckle one specifically like i'm glad that guy got his belt buckle back mm-hmm. but like the rest of them you know like take it or leave it a little bit maybe um yeah like it sort of seemed like because honestly, for like, when I listened to like the Britney Spears one, I was like, is this like, is this like a joke? Like, I'm not quite sure why they like care so much, but that's just, maybe I'm just mean. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, I don't think that's mean. Um, so, so you, like, I think you said in the Wikipedia, there's, there's one season, there's six episodes. The first episode, I'm just going to, because we're going to like refer to all these episodes. So I think I just want to like kind of what each episode is the first episode is um this woman walks past she goes to a video store she rents a movie she comes back two days later and the store has closed and like all the merchandise is gone and she couldn't figure out what happened and she still like want you know theoretically she wanted to return the mo- the movie right but she's really more like because she doesn't remember there being any signs or any indication that it was going to close um, so she was like, how did the stores close in two days without me, like, being aware of it? The second one is uh, about Britney Spears tangentially. Um, this woman, who is kind of like a struggling author, sees a picture of Britney Spears holding her her second book, um, which, like, sold very, very poorly. So she wants to know, how did Britney get a hold of my book? The third one is the case this um someone reaches out to the host starly kind and gives her this belt buckle and is like can you find out who this is and returns it to, return it to them the fourth one is she sees a very weird vanity plate on a car and so she hunts down the person with the vanity plate and asks them what why they have that vanity plate the fifth one is she tries to figure out what jake 
Gyllenhaal's actual like, <laughs> is, which, That was one that I was like, this is a joke. <laughs> yes, I was about to say, like, I, I have never said that sentence out loud before, and that is, like, that is, it's ridiculous, right? No one needs, that's a ridiculous sentence for a person to say. And then the <laughs> sixth one, as we just described, there was a sort of an odd, or a picture with an odd gag on it from a, a Welcome Back Cotter lunchbox. So she wanted to figure out where did the inspiration for this odd gag on this lunchbox come from. Um, and I, I forget what I was going to say a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot what it was before <laughs> I went into that. Um, I, oh, I guess I think it's interesting that you say... So th- there's two interesting things that you said. The first one is how you brought up Reply All. Um, and I think I actually kind of want to say this towards the end, um, that you brought up how Reply All does a similar thing sometimes. Because Gimlet Media, the, the podcast like company that made this show, has another show called Heavyweight, um, which does like a very similar thing to this. Um, and we'll we'll get more into like why that's a little bit weird at the end, right? But I think the bigger idea is that there's like there's other shows like this now, and I think you know it sounds. I mean, maybe not. Podcasting has come a, a long way in like five years, but there there wasn't like five years ago. There wasn't a ton of shows like this, um, and so. I I remember listening to this the first time, like, and I was listening to it that summer that it came out in 2015, and I just I I remember being like really floored by it. Um, I had like listened to a lot of American Life, right? Listened to like 99 percent Invisible and and uh, Radio Diaries, right? A lot of uh, Radiotopia shows, which carry a very similar. They have a very similar, like, public radio sort of vibe that, like, This American Life does. Um, and a lot of shows do because, like, you know, the people that founded Gimlet Media worked on This American Life. Like, so many shows have that. And you could call it, like, the public radio DNA. You could call it, like, the Ira Glass DNA, however you want to refer to it. Um, so this show wasn't, I don't think. It's now it's not whole it's not wholly unique in the way that it was. And so I think going back to it now, I just don't have that same sort of like, oh, you can do this with a podcast. Um because I I still think she's doing something kind of unique and special. Mm-hmm. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. Cause like I mean it might not mean a lot to us but like it means a lot to like the people whose like mysteries she's solving and like it's still interesting to hear about yeah yeah no i but like what about just and i know i listen to uh, like a like a few more podcasts than you do but just in like what you've heard or like how your understanding of podcasts do you like would you agree with that like it's not such a unique thing that she's doing anymore yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Okay, yeah. So, um, we listen for this one specifically. We listen to two, three, and five, right? So the Britney Spears one, the Belt Buckle one, and the and the Jake Gyllenhaal one, which I think are like, I think are like the standout episodes. Um, just because of kind of where, right? I guess the one like she gets to. Britney Spears and that that episode goes some places. Um, That's an ex- that must have been an expensive episode. <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay. So let that's a really good that is a really good like thing to get into, right? So I was reading a few articles about this, and um, so one of them brought up this idea of like how can a show sustain spontaneity, right? Because there's a there's a there's two episodes in the Britney Spears thing where she calls um she calls like service lines she calls ticket king or ticket master and then um I forget the other service line she calls but on the first one she ends up talking to a girl whose family won the million dollar powerball um and then the second one she like has this very like 
<laughs> deep philosophical conversation with a guy about worth and not feeling shape, right? And I th- you know, I think the magic is lost a little bit if you think about like, well, how did that conversation come about, right? So when you say expensive, like what do you what do you mean specifically? Like just time or or what do you mean? I mean, like, the fact that she spent all that money to go meet Britney Spears to oh, ask her that okay. question. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, she does. She spent, like, $2,500 to do that, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I guess, so, that, I, would you agree that, like, there is an air of spontaneity, or that is something that makes this show special, or? Yeah, I mean, well, the thing is, like, when I, because the first episode that I listened to this week was the Britney Spears one is like and then like we got hit with like the philosophical conversation on the phone so I was kind of expecting more of that I was like is this what it's like gonna be like for the other episodes I think that maybe that was just pretty more unique to that show yeah 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 but yeah I guess yeah and, and but like I guess if you like you know did she like call them a bunch of times until she got an interesting person to talk to like I guess I I would be really interested to know how this show was made because um I don't know those those moments are kind of special like I think that's I that like I I don't that that moment doesn't hit me as hard now because I think you know I've just heard other people sort of you, you know, you've heard of those moments on, on podcasts since then, right? Where, like, you're just kind of having this, people are having these sort of, like, normal conversations and suddenly it gets, like, kind of intimate and, and personal in this really meaningful way. And, and so it's not as unique. But I remember hearing that the first time. It's just like, oh, like, you can, yeah, just like, oh, that you can do this on a, on a podcast. And I think there's something, like, very nice about her right something right she sounds like very approachable um and i don't and i think that's like that's part of it right like she's not trying to be deep or philosophical but she seems to almost draw it out of people just with the way that she is um yeah i don't i don't know she's i starly Collins, like i don't know i, I think she's like kind of a, a, a unique voice um and she's done a lot of work on this american life so she's like definitely got really like a really strong background in in this type of of show um what else right so the britney spears one that moment did anything else hit you hit you kind of strongly strongly meaning like i was impressed or just like interested anything right i mean just thinking thinking that this is ridiculous. Why am I listening <laughs> to this? Is also strong, I guess. Yeah. Um. I mean, I'd have to say the belt buckle when they found the dude who it belonged to, and he's like, he seemed to be like pretty moved by it, or like that seemed to like mean a lot to him, which was like kind of made me think, okay, this isn't like as like I don't know, not serious as I thought it was, <laughs> or it didn't okay. have to be. Okay. Okay. Does it seem? So, like, what you see, you said that a couple times. So, does like, what kind of indicates to you that it's like pretty lighthearted, or like, how does that come across to you? Just because of, like, I guess the mystery is that like people like just like bring like that she solves for people. It's just like, especially the Jake Dylan Hall one. It's just like who cares how tall he is yeah. and what's like and you're going through all of this trouble to like find out but um i mean it's still entertaining yeah i think that one's like interesting that one's interesting right because she gets to talk to jake gyllenhaal but i i think it is the outlier in the episode is just or in the season it's just as far as how unimportant it is because even in like even in the video store one right she gets it ends up kind of being a store about like about the neighborhood right because that video you know she ends up talking to a bunch of people who 
remember that video store and it meant a lot to up uh, right the Britney Spears one she you know ends up talking to this author about her failed book and she has these interesting conversations with, like the service people um the lunchbox one I just listened to that one this morning and it ends up being a story about the about a guy I forget I forget his name he it was there was a very famous painter who painted a lot of the lunch boxes for Aladdin back in, which was like a, a toy company uh, or, you know, sort of a toy or like novelties company that made um, lunch boxes back in the 60s and 70s, back when those were like, that, like a metal lunch box was sort of a, a pretty valuable thing. Or just, you know, we don't, people don't really carry metal lunch boxes around anymore. Um, but that kind of ended up being a story about how he, loved that job so much and then he was sort of pushed out um and then you know soon after he was pushed out and he didn't he didn't really know what to do with himself and he ended up like he ended up passing away pretty soon after right so i i think yeah i would say that the jake gyllenhaal's one it is an is an outlier kind of in the season but i think i don't know it's, Maybe it's like the music. I, I agree you're right that there is something light hearted in the presentation, even though I would say it doesn't usually end super light hearted. Um, yeah. Not particularly light hearted. Not not heavy, but it just ends and you feel well, like there's like more to it if you like keep yes. listening, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You can like I think you can sort of get more out of it if you want. Yeah. Yeah, and I think she wants to, right? And and yeah, yeah I think yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think that's a really good way to put it. Really good. Um, all right. So I guess you know one thing I kind of want to get into is so they only ever made right. They only made six episodes of this, and you know, back in twenty sixteen, you know, she wrote a, a blog post. I'm gonna work. I'm gonna refer to a couple articles. Did you get a chance to look at those articles that I emailed you, Ange? <laughs> no. No. I'll okay, look at them fine. right now. <laughs> well, I'll summarize. You them, sent right? them to me this afternoon, right? I I, I did. Yeah, yeah. You, I was like, doing homework. <laughs> it's all right. Um. So this came out in October of 2016. That she was working on season two. It was taking a long time, but she was sort of she had sort of cracked it. She thought and um. But then it was reported, you know, Gimlet, you know, who owns the show and who, like, helped publish her podcast, canceled it. Um, and she was pretty upset about that. And uh, apparently some pretty hurtful and, like, mean things were said to her specifically that, like, you know, indicate, like, oh, maybe this isn't such a, a great workplace or isn't, like, as... You know, Gimlet's kind of seen it has this very like startup. You know, they vibe. They very much played off the idea or the the fact that they're one of their co-founders has come from like, this American life, so they have like this public radio sort of do it the right way um, DNA, right? Kind of built into the way their mm -hmm. company, right? Like supported by the public, right? They have like a subscriber. Um, there's a you know part of their support comes from subscribers i don't know if that's the case anymore since spotify bought them um spotify paid 230 million for them last year um and now i think there's a few i don't know if i i think there are a few exclusive podcasts that you can only get on spotify but i'm not 100 percent sure i know their big one reply all is not a, and is not exclusive um but like so yeah, so it came out in, 20, like, end of 2016, and it had been canceled, and part of that was the show is really expensive and takes a while to to make and produce, right? And I think, you know, you said, you said that, right? So she's traveling, she's going to, like, LA, she's going to Arizona, um, so there's, you know, money in that way, but I, I guess the reason I said I'd be interested is... And I guess this, I would be interested to know how, like, a lot of podcasts are made just, like, the time scale, right? But, like, those those moments that seem so authentic, right? Like, how, 
how manufactured were they or what it, what was like the work that took in to get there um I'd be really interested to know that with the people she talked to on the phone right did like did she call up just once and she get she got the ticket master guy like mm-hmm. you know what I mean that would I would be so <laughs> fascinated to know that um but I think this is it's I think that's also interesting have you so have you listened you listen to Reply All? Only that one episode. Just that one. Okay. okay with the, I think... the case of the missing song or something. Okay. Have you listened to Heavyweight? Or have I had you listen to Heavyweight? Not that I know of, no. Okay. So, Reply All on occasion, I think that, that so- episode where they're like searching for the missing song is a very good example. But they also made a show called Heavyweight. Um with another guy who worked for this American Life named Jonathan Goldstein. And he, it's like, it's such a similar premise that it, I think it's kind of, it's eerie now when I think about it, because his premise is not that he's solving mysteries, but he's like, I'm going to go back and talk, figure like, do you have something specifically about personal relationships is there something about a personal relationship that you've always wondered about from your past? Like, can I answer that question or give you closure on that? Oh. It, so it, it's, this, it's yeah, right? It's like a really similar premise. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, bringing closure to people about things that they've, like, always wondered about, you know? Um, I, you know, I, I don't know if the the her sort of tying it to objects a little bit more, even though that that's pretty loose because that's not even always the case um made it more difficult but i i i think it's weird and like you know kind of i don't even know if it's useful to bring up i just guess like i'm i'm sad we never got more of this i i i definitely would have liked to hear more um and i yeah i don't i don't know why gimlet moved on for this and then like brought in that other like podcast which is doing a very similar thing um I'll I'll put these two episodes in, in the show notes if anyone wants to read them, um, but yeah. So I, uh, well, I sent you a it. question. I know. I wanted to see. It. I just wanted to make sure there. I'll edit this out. I wanted to make sure there isn't um, anything else. That is... Okay. Do you want to get into that question then? Sure. All right. Don't you got anything? Do you have no, anything but else you I'll think of something on the fly. Oh okay. no. No. Okay. All right. Um. All right. Give us a break. Mm-hmm. All right. Wait. We'll do like a. <laughs> what the heck? Like a I was. Of, do a bit I, of a longer break, and then you come back with like, I thought of this question, or however you want to say it. But like, okay. do like at least ten seconds, just so I can see it when I'm editing. All right. So yesterday I had texted you a question that I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to ask this question on the podcast. I was so proud of it because I thought of it all by myself. Um, But let's pretend that mystery show is still going on and Starly asks you if you have a mystery for her to solve. Do you have one for her? I, I think so. I'm not, I'm not sure if this, is I so I have like a very like dark what of like I don't know if they're actually like in Mr. She would be involved in because they they have a little bit more to do with like personal relationships um so they might like be better for that heavy, heavyweight podcast I was describing but I think I think maybe um so and this is embarrassing I hate <laughs> talking about this but when as a sophomore in Oh. Or no, not as a sophomore, as a freshman in college. Have I told you this? I think so. You is probably, it? Is it about the Facebook? Thing? Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> I don't know if this is like her alley, but this is the only guy I could think of. I just want to like know. But so freshman in college, twenty fall of twenty thirteen. Um, there was a secret admirers Facebook group. Um, and. For your school. For my school, yeah. And so I <laughs> and I was on that page way too much. I was on there 
<laughs> way too much. I'm embarrassed to say. But <clears throat> I saw there was a message, right? A, like a vague message about, you know, someone, you know, however those secret admirer messages go about like someone in their Spanish class at like 7.45 in the morning. I was like, oh, I have a Spanish class at like 7.45 in the morning. Like, hey, whatever. And then, you know, maybe four or five days later, there was a slightly more specific message about Spanish class at 7.45 in the morning. I was like, oh, maybe that could apply to me, but, like, I don't know. Probably not. Like, <laughs> what are the chances? Because there's lots of other Spanish classes happening at 7.45. And then the third one, which was probably another three or four days later, was a, like, it used my name. <laughs> it did, they did say their name, right? They're anonymous, but it used my name. Spanish class 7.45 in the morning, right? And so, like, and so... Suddenly you're like, oh, this is me. There's this other person. It's not a big class. It's probably like 20 people. Mm -hmm. So not a big class, right? Maybe like, you know, 10 men, 10 women. Um, And so I'm like, you know, I'm trying to figure out who it is. And I I definitely approached someone thinking that I was oh. right and I was wrong. I was very wrong. And <laughs> How did she it. react? She was she was nice. She was fine, <laughs> but yeah, she was nice and fine, and you know, um, but no, I just like asked her, so it was awkward. But she was like, "No, that's not me, right?" So you know, like, yeah. And then I was like, "I'm not putting any more effort into thinking about this because this is horrifying." <laughs> and so there were no more messages, and. Maybe it was her then, because maybe you scared her off. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Um, you can just tell yourself that, though, to make you feel better if it helps. No, I... Uh, <laughs> I yeah, well, maybe it was. I don't know. I was a very awkward, like, 19-year-old, so maybe, you know. But, yeah, so I dropped it and kept to myself in that class for the rest of it. But oh. I don't think it was her. Maybe it was... I would be interested. To, uh, either way, I would want to know who it is, right? I would want to know who was it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Maybe Starlight would be interested. Maybe not. Should we? Should we at her in should the we comments? Add Starly kind? <laughs> no, don't at Starly kind. Can you figure out who? Yeah. <laughs> we don't because we remember we looked back to try to find the post and it wasn't even there. Oh, I, was just, I wasn't sure if that was with you or if that was someone else. That was with you. That was definitely with me. <laughs> uh, only, only Mark Zuckerberg can find the answer to this problem. <laughs> he doesn't. Like, he doesn't care. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ams. What about you? What, what mystery would you have for Starly? Um, I don't know. I feel like a lot of things in my life. Either I could, if I had, like, I could just ask somebody. If, like, it's a personal relationship thing, or I just, I don't care enough to find out. Maybe, um, whenever I order Amazon packages to my, my new apartment, they never get arrived, but they always say that they're delivered. I, I'd like to know what's going on there, because I've lost a lot what of Amazon. Am what, yeah. what do you do? And, and the USPS, and, like, United States Postal Services. Okay, Wait. but actually, no, this is weird. So I had ordered some strawberry protein powder off of Amazon, and I ordered it to my address, and it said it was delivered, but, like, it obviously wasn't because I looked everywhere for it, and it was never delivered. So then I re- I was like, hey, I never got it. Can I have a new one, please? And they said, yes, okay, great. And then the same thing happened again, and I was like, oh. I did not get it. And then um, they were like, okay, and then I was like, can you just send it to an Amazon hub locker near my apartment? And they did. And then I got it. But then here's the thing. Like, four weeks later, there's two packages outside my door no. of the store. Right. And so, like, that happens a lot. And then, like, with other Amazon packages, they just, like, never show up. And I don't care enough. They're, like, $2. I don't care enough to, like, bother anybody. And then I also ordered a watch. I ordered it from, like, China, so maybe that's why it's not here, because, like, I don't know. But, like, the thing is, it said it was delivered as well on the tracking information they gave me, but, like, it's not here. <laughs> so, because, like, if it was just an Amazon thing, I'd be like, maybe it's just an Amazon thing. But, like, because it's also, like, the postal service, too, it might be, like, because my apartment's, like, 
not hard to find or something. Yeah. I think maybe someone's stealing it. I mean, that's people do steal packages. I I, I don't know, but people do do that. Huh. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's right. I, I, I This is something I wanted to say. I think that's interesting, right? Because I think what's interesting when you said like you just kind of ignore the mis- those little mysteries, right? Right. I think that's kind of I think I guess I think that's why this is a really interesting premise for a show that is explicitly about those things that you just ignore and you're like I'm never going to find out about this. Mhm. Well, what if someone did? I think that is a really good premise for a show. Um and I, I guess I, I do, I think, you know, and I think this was, like, executed really well, right? And I guess I think maybe that's why having a premise be that specific, I think you kind of verbalized something I can say quite, is a premise that is so specific, and I think that's pretty universal, right? Like, we all have that. Mm-hmm. Um, that, like, oh, I'm just never going to know the answer to this. And we learn to live with it, right? Mm-hmm. And I, yeah, I think having a premise that it, uh, it is so specific, and then like executed on really well in this really like kind way, right? I think she, I think part of the show was like she's very kind. I guess I think maybe that's what's really unique. Um, yeah. About it. Yeah. So that's mystery show podcast. Do you have anything else you want to say? Uh no, I mean I enjoyed it. I definitely I. The extent of the podcasts that I listen to are any podcasts that Nicole Byer hosts or co-hosts. Um, so <laughs> listening to like this was definitely different, but I liked it. So I'm kind of I want to like find more podcasts just like okay. that are out there. But no, I liked it. Okay, nice. Yeah, we could do. I have a. I mean, I have a. There's a couple other short podcasts. Yeah, there's <laughs> if you a choose couple other one. like short. <laughs> podcasts we could listen to like we could listen to s-town maybe we could listen to um we could listen to a couple episodes of heavyweight i think you know that might be an interesting for compare and contrast um we could listen to um i have a couple other narrative podcasts like death in ice valley that's a really interesting one so nice we're gonna we're gonna take a short break and come back uh, for the for the last segment of the show, we'll see you next time. All right, so we're back. We're gonna share some things that uh, we're excited about this week. Joey, why don't you start us off? Okay. Um. Okay, I have a short thing. Have you have you listened to the Sufjan album anymore? Have you listened? Nope. No, you're done, you're done with it? I'm done. Okay, all right. Is that... You know what's funny, though? Yeah, what? Rebecca, our sister, she had emailed me. Because I remember in the podcast, I was like, I know that you, Dave, John, Rebecca, like Sufjan Stevens. She had emailed me. She's like, I liked your podcast, but also I don't like Sufjan Stevens. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. All right, so we're issuing a correction. Our older sister does not like Sufjan Rebecca, we're sorry. <laughs> she, no, she doesn't. She doesn't like his voice that much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, if you, yeah, that that's tough to get past with any artist. If you like, if you fundamentally don't like their voice, the the, the music's gonna be tough. Right. Um, all right. So I've kept listening to it. I don't listen to it all the way through. I listen to the first. I really like the first two songs. Make me an offer. You I cannot refuse, and I, th- I think "Come Run Away with Me," and then I usually forget to skip down to the next song I like. So the first four or five songs will play, but then Ursa Major is really good, and then I've been listening to "The Ascension." Right, the the, the album is called "The Ascension," but there's also a song called "The Ascension." I've been listening to that song quite a bit. Um, you know, we we talked about this on the episode, Sufjan usually feels in a little bit more metaphor and, and, and subtext. I think this episode's pretty... I think this 
album is pretty explicit in, in what it's about, right? He's he's feeling guilt for his the the sort of what he has thought America is, or what he and what he has thought it, it owed him, and sort of how he um has the the way he has been he has sort of operated in in the world sort of and what his kind of reckoning what 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 he thinks his like newfound responsibility is right in the wake of black lives matter protests and, and the murder of george floyd and um killing of brianna taylor and all these things that have happened this summer that have brought these conversations uh to uh and have made them all very public right and, and made them all aware of um and so he's reckoning with his responsibility to respond to that as as a person i would say i guess just put that other way not just as an artist but also as a person right Mm -hmm. um so and so and i you know that is something that i've you know been struggling with this last summer um and and so i i i I kind of i i've been that that song sounds really good but i've also been enjoying listening to it um because i think he verbalizes right uh that struggle for his that his struggle very well and I think there's stuff in there I connect with. Um all right. That that's not it exactly though. Um, <laughs> it's short. Um so my favorite podcast, which is a bo- video game podcast, we're not gonna do that. They recently <laughs> held a five day uh Twitch live stream for national bailouts, which is a a, a black led organization to uh that focuses on um raising money to bail out uh specifically black mothers out of jail and before their court hearings um but also focus uh on ending uh cash bail and and the carceral jail system as a whole so they did a twitch stream for five days for that and they were able to raise like one hundred fifty thousand dollars, which is amazing mm. but they've also been putting the twitch videos onto youtube they put up like a couple a day because there's almost a hundred hours right and they mm-hmm. did in like two and three hour segments so there's you know going to be like 40 or 50 videos at the end and i've just been enjoying sort of seeing a new one of those each day just um because those are yeah those i those are some of my favorite people to, to listen to talk um I really appreciate the way they look at video games and culture and how they never, you know, they're they're very much about the intersectionality of politics and culture and race and gender and all those things with with video games, which I enjoy, but also just with like any any piece of media that they're they happen to be talking about. Um, so those, yeah, those videos are going up on YouTube, um, and I'll I'll link that. I'll link that like playlist in the show notes, but that that's been really, really nice to watch over the last couple of weeks. Cool. All right. What about um, you? Well, now I'm embarrassed to say. No, don't be embarrassed. All right. Well, um, I've been watching a lot of 90 Day Fiance. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's my first I- time watching it. I had no idea what it's about. All I knew about it is like Big Ed from like TikTok. Um, but I decided to watch it, and it's so funny. But, like, I also don't understand why, I, like, I'm watching the most recent season because I don't like watching things that look old. Yeah, yeah <laughs> um, fair. <laughs> and there are, like, so many couples. It's really hard to keep track of. Yeah. But I'm just really enjoying it. <laughs> and okay. I'm thinking uh, Nicole Byer does a podcast on 90 Day Fiancé, but it's oh, on her yeah. Patreon, and you still have to, oh. like, pay five bucks a month month for it which like i know isn't that much but it's like i don't know if that's a commitment i want to make especially because i listen to these podcasts when i'm like either doing homework or falling asleep yeah. so like i end up not really paying attention to them anyways yeah but yeah yeah i feel you have that's you seen you. 90 day fiance i have seen 90 day fiance uh not a, not a lot but i've seen it um is this the season where the people from america go to the other countries i think it's called 90 day fiance the other way or something no this, no okay all right i don't know when that was i think that was pretty recent those are the most recent episodes i've seen i've like only seen a few i 
Yeah, it's interesting. I like <laughs> I you know, like bravo to those people for like making a, a big decision like that. I But like I'm a, we should yeah, we should have an episode. I mean we could have a reality T V episode. I struggle with reality T V a little bit. Um I do find I, I, I can't say it's not entertaining on some level or that I don't like you know, when you sit down and watch it, it's not entertaining, right? Because you're, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess you are wondering why people are doing some of the things that they're doing, right? I think that's mm-hmm. part of the appeal, I, I think. Um, but I, once I watched, or like, at the, early this summer, uh, my partner and I, we watched a lot of Catfish. <laughs> like a lot of we watched almost every season of catfish not the first like two or three but i think we watched like three or four seasons of catfish so i'm not you know i i, I do like my reality tv um, <laughs> in certain places as well um all right nice so that brings us to the episode of the pod uh the, or the end of the podcast those are the things that we're enjoying this week we're gonna be back next week with boys state is that right Ange? yes okay we're back with boys state we're gonna try to get angela to watch it um yes <laughs> she's a little bit wary right uh, it just but, didn't look funny but i will give it oh, a shot did you so you watched the trailer yeah i watched the trailer you made me okay. remember <laughs> oh okay i guess now i'm a little bit worried <laughs> i if you're not hooked by the trailer, you know what we're gonna do it. Can I? Can we commit? We're gonna do it. Even I will commit. Like it's it. on the okay. record now. We have to do it. All right, we're gonna do it. Boy State. I think it's only well, legal. You know, it's technically only on Apple Plus. You can find other places on the internet if you know how to do that. Um, it came out in August. Uh, I think it's an A twenty four movie about um this sort of. Don't give too much away. Okay, yeah, we'll save it for next time. Uh, (laughs) But anyways, if you want to watch along with us, Boys State for next week. We will see you next time. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.